question. You know, I know that Traylon Burks has told us that, you know, you've been really on him to make sure he's catching the balls correctly. Uh, how is that going with Traylon? It's been really good. You know, he's a kid that when I first got here, Coach Tepp had mentioned he catches the ball by his head. So I, I brought him in. This was before we ever had spring ball. I said, hey, Traylon, if, if an NFL team is, has two guys of equal value, you're both great returners and you're a great returner, who are they going to take, a guy that catches above his head or a guy that's going to catch it properly with the body tuck? So he kind of took it to heart and has really worked on it. And we got there the first practice. Man, he looked great. So I'm, I'm really, really proud of him. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Coach. You, you've been an offensive line coach, a tight end coach in the past. I'm wondering, you know, how you wound up being a special teams guy and just the guy that, that Coach Pittman really trusts in that area. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a long story, but when I first got into college coaching, I was in high school coaching for about six years, and uh, Bobby Bowden hires me at Florida State as a graduate assistant. He he says, I want you to coach the long snappers. And I was a GA with the old line, but he said, I want you to coach the long snappers. So for whatever reason, in that picture there, I chose a linebacker that had played in games to be the starting snapper. And then Bowden said, well, don't tell me who's played in games, who's the best snapper. I said, well, this, this freshman kid is out of Pensacola, Florida. So he said, we're going to play the best snapper. And if he can't do it, the pressure's too much, and we'll go to other guys. So that got me started with teams. I go to Central Florida. I'm coaching the old line there. And the special teams coordinator comes up one day and asks me to coach the kicker, the punter, and the long snapper prior to meetings. So I, I did that, and I go so – I coach the O-line, and I do that. Then I leave Middle Tennessee O-line, Georgia Southern. I go to Iowa State with Gene Chizik, and he wants me to coach the tight ends and handle recruiting. So while I'm there, me and him and a guy named Jay Boware, who now works for the University of Texas, we, we put our punt scheme together. And we also put together our kick <laughs> et cetera. So I, I really – just for whatever reason, the good Lord just kept putting teams in front of me. And then when I go to Auburn, uh, Malzahn, when he becomes a head coach, he hires Rich Passacci that's now with the Raiders. He, he, uh, he said, well, I'm going to hire this guy, but I bet you he don't stay two weeks. Sure enough, the guy comes in, leaves, and then uh, Gus hires me at Auburn as a special teams guy. And so about 11, 12 years ago, when I really started getting into it. And it's, it's been really, really a lot of fun. You know, running the old line room is really fun. But running special teams, being able to run, you know, the whole team in a short meeting every day is really neat as well. Um. Hey, Scott, did you live closer to Sam Pittman in Athens or, or here? <laughs> Definitely not here, but <laughs> I did in, uh, in Athens. We were actually neighbors. So yeah. if he was out by his pool or something, you know, I could always hear him playing the music on a Sunday afternoon in the off season. Yeah, neat. so – what 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 drew you here? I mean, you, you had a pretty comfortable situation going on at Georgia. I did. You know, Pittman did a good job of recruiting me, number one. And I think a lot of him. And, you know, at each week, it just seemed like from around game seven or eight, he kept showing up in my office. Now, me and him worked uh, together a little bit on field goal, right? He's an old line coach, protection. He'd come in, and every time we talk about it, he'd start talking about Arkansas. He'd say, hey, if I go, you're going to come with me. So – you know, at the uh, as we got at the Sugar Bowl and whatnot, he, you know, we're talking during that time. And anyway, I decided I was going to come, and he he said, "Hey, I'm going to let Kirby know." I said, "Hey, won't you just wait <laughs> wait until we get back? The plane lands back in Athens because I'm going to be eating breakfast with him, riding on a plane with him. It's going to be uncomfortable." And he said, "No, nah, I, I got to go ahead and do this, get this started." So, uh, but I, I just thought working for a guy like Sam Pittman was a great opportunity, and I really liked. The names I was hearing, he was hiring as OC and DC as well. Nikki. Hey, Coach. I know you practice with a lot of, you know, starter types on, on special teams, but, like, what's your philosophy with actually playing them at, like, the starting DBs and stuff in, in your schemes um, for returns and stuff? Like, how, what's the balance going to be? Yeah, so what I've always looked at, if a kid starts on an offensive defense, Let's get him on two units, okay? If he's a guy that just plays a role on offense or defense, let's get him on four units if he's good enough. And then, you know, there, there, there's guys that in my career, like when I was at Auburn, Rudy Ford, who's now I think fifth or sixth year in the NFL, he would always play three units. He'd play DB, 
But when we played the Iron Bowl, he played four units because he's such a good uh, punt return cover guy for us, a hold-up guy. So you got to kind of play the role, see how much they're playing with O&D and work from there. But I try to put those numbers on it. Two, if they're a starter, four, if they're, a, you know, ha have a role. And then all four, of course, if you can find three or four guys that, boy, they can just play teams. That's really an awesome deal. And they may be, you know, a backup or whatnot at O&D, but sometimes those guys are your best special teams players. Otis. Yeah, Coach. Hey, can you talk about A.J. Reed, how consistent – about his consistency just, you know, from the start of preseason practice till now, how consistent has he been? Yeah, you know, A.J.'s done a good job. He's uh, kind of come in this summer and it's really odd, you know, what the practice is. We're going to practice, we're not, et cetera. But he's done a good job. He had one week in there, he had a little bit of a lull. But for the most part, he's been, been a consistent guy. And, you know, he's a guy that at Duke as a freshman – had kind of an up and down year. And the thing I like about him that he did at Duke, he battled his way back and really finished at Duke with a phenomenal career. I think, you know, finished up around 15 of 18 last year, kicked a uh, 51 yard in the Bama game. So been, been pleased with him. He's brought some good stability to that position and, and having a guy that's been in some big games, that that's, uh, mean, means a lot at that position. Nate. Um, Scott, since we've got uh, Debbie and Warren tonight, just how has he looked as a kick returner and where else could he figure on special teams? Yeah, the, the Davion's a kid I really like. Uh, he's a really smart kid. He picks up quick. And he's a guy that, you know, as we move forward, I'm going to have to see how big the role is on the offense. But he's certainly a guy that is going to help us in the return game. He's also a guy that can play some other spots for us, you know, possibly on the punt team, uh, possibly use him on the uh, – a kickoff coverage unit now, but again, he's a good, really good return guy. But but he can do a lot of other things too. Been been really pleased with him. Coach, yeah, coach. I was wondering, uh, George Carrington, uh, he's from California. I think played high school ball in Connecticut and then Michigan. How, how did you? How were you aware of him? What kind of led him to, to Arkansas? Well, he, he's certainly traveled, well, well traveled, and. He's a guy that, you know, out of high school, not sure what the situation was, but went to a prep school, I think Connecticut. Then he goes to Michigan. And so we, we kind of get in the market. I'm looking, hey, what do we need to do here? So I really kind of look for either a grad transfer or a transfer. And so I kind of see what's on the market. I talk to the people I know that know about these guys. And uh, so then once I kind of start looking at George and I, I call and visit with a guy at Michigan. I call and visit with the coach at the uh, prep school. I call and visit with the high school coach and just try to do my, my due diligence best I can. Um, but I do th I think George is a guy that's coming in, he's competing and, you know, doing what we want him to do there. And it's been, been a real good pickup for us, you know, and we're really pleased to have him in our program. Trey, Biddy. Yeah, coach, I was curious about uh, AJ, I'm not, I don't know if he's going to be your kickoff guy or not, but I was wondering what kind of leg he has. And I know that you, with Rodrigo at Georgia, you only kicked him three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I think. You plan on implementing that here, and you think that'll make a difference? Because he's been good on field goal clip, but he hadn't put a whole lot in the end zone at Duke at least. Right, yeah. You know, each kid's different. W with Rod, and I'm sure you've heard the story where he was a 33% touchback guy. Then we went to really managing the leg and – turned it into more of a three-day-a-week routine, and he went from 33 to, I think, 79 – I'm sorry, 73 to 91 89 percent. And so we are certainly managing the kickers and the punters in practice every day, as well as long snappers. And uh, I think our goal is when we get to the game on Saturday, we're fresh and they can they can play their best game. Now, with that, with that equal great kicks, touchbacks, et cetera, I don't know. We'll see as, as we move forward. Bob. Um, hey, Scott, how you doing? Um, with, with, with your background at Georgia and Sam's background, how much do you think that helps you guys getting ready to play Georgia in the opener? You know, we, we certainly know the personnel. You know, we, 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 I, I, mean, I have a great feel for the personnel. I work with all these guys on special teams, but uh, that, that part helps. And, and it can also worry, you know, because they're, they're a really loaded football team, got a lot of guys back. But uh, it certainly helps. I think Sam being uh, 
the old line coach there going against the defense every day, you know, that certainly brings value as well. But um, for, for me, it's tough in, in the respect that they've hired a new special teams coordinator that's never done teams. And so, you know, what, what he brings, where he's going to pull from, I guess, would be the areas he's been in Alabama and I guess LSU kind of with a lot of the same staff. But so that, that part for me is different, you know. But I think uh, personnel-wise, I'll be very familiar with him. Scheme-wise would be, be more different for me than, and than like Coach Bryles with the, with the offense because Kirby's back, right? So they're going to run the same type, type defensive schemes. John Neighbors. Hey, Coach, uh, I kind of have a two-part question for you. First off, uh, a lot of different teams in college football like to do more of a uh, by-committee type thing when it comes to their special teams. What would you say with some of the benefits of doing it that way by having an actual special teams coach dedicated to that? And also, where can somebody get that sweet hat? Because I have never seen one like that before. <laughs> well, the hat, uh, I think Kyle gave it to me right before I walked in here. So, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You have to ask him. You got a pretty sweet hat on yourself, but thank you. The, the, the uh, you know, I, I've worked for schools that, that split it up, and what you find out is the linebacker coach cares about coaching the KOC, but linebackers are a lot more important. And like I was at Florida State back, we did that there, and the guy that was in charge of the kicker punt long snapper coach the running backs, and he just had. Hey, y'all go to the stadium, y'all do your thing and come back. So you flip that, you flip that over and you go, hey, we're going to hire a guy that does teams. And then he's all about, hey, we're going to be good on teams. I get to coach the specialist in the special teams meeting, but I also get to leave and go to a specialist meeting and coach them on kicking, punting, and long snapping those techniques. I'm not worried about the tight ends. When I was at Auburn, I did special teams and tight ends, but I was over all the teams where at Georgia – he gave an opportunity to just do teams. So I think you can really help your organization buy in. You can hold your coaches that help you on teams. And, you know, because just like O and D, I've got coaches that come in and help me on the practice field. You can hold them more accountable as well to make sure they're doing a good job. But I, I hopefully it'll pay big dividends for us here. Alyssa. Hey, Coach, is Josh Oglesby a guy you've gotten working on kickoff or punt return just because of his speed and his um, track background? Yes, you know, ha having him come over from track has been really good. A uh, kid that has uh, great speed. I'm uh, glad to have him as a part of the organization. And, you know, I I've always been a, a guy that believes in recruiting speed. And he was on our campus, and the better to get him out here has been, been, been a great value. And he's a kid that we're certainly working as a uh, kick return or punt return as well. Hey, Betty. Yeah, Coach, you don't see many 6'3", 230-pound punt returners like Traylon Burks is. He's pretty unique. Like you said, catches the ball over his head. I was wondering, what are – I mean, he, he didn't drop any last year, but what are the, some of the disadvantages, just like taking a hit and then being more likely to fumble or the disadvantage? Yeah, yeah you know, I, th I think anytime you catch the ball above your head or if you're running down the field with the ball over your head, it's certainly got a better chance of getting knocked out. We just like to try to tuck the ball to the body and, and, and keep that from, from happening, you know. If, uh, if a guy catches the ball over his head and runs for a touchdown for 40 yards, I'm going to slap him on the butt and I'm going to say, hell of a job. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, you didn't tuck the ball in. But I'm just trying to work with him on securing and, and try, trying to not only make his future better here, but make his future better down the road. But, but he, he's a heck of a kid and, man, one heck of a uh, return guy. Tom? Wondering about that kicking job with, with Reed and Phillips. Those are the only two guys – kicking or how's that going and how close are you to having a depth chart we're, we're, we're working on it and you know we, we're going to try to turn the page of georgia here pretty quick and at that point we're going to try to kind of start sliding people into positions but but uh those two guys have, have certainly done a good job of competing and um you know we'll kind of, kind of see who wins it out but been, been real pleased with matthew phillips i think he's came in and really worked hard and i'm not sure what his you know, what it was like in the past for him, his approach, but, but, but real, real pleased with him. I think we have a solid kicker there. Coach. Yeah, Coach AJ was telling us last night that uh, Carrington has also been his holder, uh, but he never held ball, held before on kick, uh, field goals. Uh, how did y'all get him to be your holder, and, and how has he kind of handled it? 
Well, what I've always done is I've always had the punters hold. So if they couldn't hold it all or they could hold or whatnot, I've always kind of force fed them and just taught, taught them to hold the football. Now, we, we certainly use some quarterbacks as well. And, you know, when I was with uh, Coach Smart, he always liked the quarterback because he felt like he had a better opportunity with a fake. But Jay Camarda held uh, for us the last two years, and then Cam Nislick did the year before, which were punters. But our backup holder was a quarterback. So, you know, we're, we're certainly working the punters and, and working some of our quarterbacks as well. And but, but they're together all day, right? So it gives them an opportunity when the quarterbacks are over there getting after it, we can get on our field and they can really focus and uh, try to get really good at the trade. Bob. I think Sam said the other night there's five assistants working under you on special teams. Um, who are those guys? What responsibilities do they have and kind of how does that all work? Uh, yeah. So, t typically, and how it works here as well is our, our coach Steph, the receiver coach, our coach Sam Carter, the DB coach, the running back coach, uh, coach Jimmy Smith, our linebacker coach, um, uh, gosh, coach Rhodes, and then I'm trying to think of the other guy here. We've got um, coach Cooper, the tight end coach. So, their role is essentially every day we're going to have a staff meeting just like the O&D does. Now, they're going to spend more time together, but we typically get a 20, 30-minute meeting every day to get organized for practice, and they have specific assignments they coach. So, for an example, on punt, I may have a, a guy that coaches a gunner, another guy that coaches a gunner, and then a guy that may coach this side, that side. And then – so I'm just splitting up duties. Their assignments never change. I just want them to be an expert – at that area they're focused on. And if they do that, we, we can be a great football team. Because like they say, now 12 eyes are better than two. <laughs> uh, we got time for a couple more. So let me know if you have any in the chat. Mason. Hey coach, uh, Georgia ranked, I think at Georgia last year, you guys were fourth in the SEC in punting. Arkansas was dead last in Coach Pittman said the other day that Carrington kicked a 52-yarder in scrimmage. I was just wondering where you think Arkansas will be in the SEC when it comes to punting this year. Yeah, I mean, it's really just how the season unfolds. You know, we at, at Georgia, we spend a lot of time on, uh, on coverage, and we're doing the same thing here. And at the end of the day, it's all about your punter doing a great job of not, not you know, Maybe George hit a 52, but maybe hits a 39. You just, you just don't know. But end of the day, you want those numbers to come together with hang time and distance. And if you do that, we feel like we we'll always have an opportunity to go cover a kick. So how we'll finish, I don't know. All I care about is let's go out and let's be the best we can be, and, and let's try to improve on who we were last year. All right, three more. Seth? Yeah, Coach, uh, you said you wanted the punter to be the holder. Uh, why? This is why, and it's a great question, and I'm going to give you a great answer. If, if I have an entire practice, let's say we have a two-hour practice, and for one hour and a half, I'm not with the offense, I'm not with the defense, I, those guys can get over there for an hour and a half every day if we need it and just work on kicking and holding. So I, I would rather have a guy that gets comfortable because he's with him all the time as opposed to working with a guy right after practice you know, when he's exhausted and you try to get four holes out of him. So that's always been my approach. And that's really what they do in the NFL as well. So I try to kind of model that after them, you know, start around 10, 10, 11 years ago. Nikki. Coach, you probably saw uh, the uh, fake punt that UNT pulled on Arkansas or, or the fake return that they pulled on Arkansas a couple years ago. And then like the, the, the weird chess pass that Arkansas did in special teams as well last season. Do you lean towards like creativity in your, in your special teams or are you more traditional? Well, I just try to, what I always tell our guys is be solid. And, I, and I'm talking about the kicker, the punter, the long snap. Let's be solid. What is solid? Do your job. What is your assignment for the kicker? Field zones, hang distance, be solid. So I want to be solid first. I don't want to ever hurt our football team. And then if we're going to do a trick play or, you know, get a big return, 
that that brings great value to your team because we're always talking about momentum plays. So if we can return a punt for 20 yards, we just stole two first down. If we can get a kick return out to the 40, we've just given our offense great momentum. If we can get a punt and pin them inside the 10-yard line. Now, trick plays or people run trick plays against you, all, all you can do is to practice and prepare. And hopefully on the run, your kids can think and react to – to, to the different tricks that, that are out there. But I've seen both of those, and uh, they're tough. You know, the, the, the fakes can, can go great, or everybody can say you're the worst coach in the world. <laughs> Last one, Bob. Yeah, Scott, uh, uh, Jordan Silver, pretty good uh, deep snapper, as, as far as I know. Um, I, uh, how's he been? How'd you feel about inheriting him? What, what kind of job is he doing? Yeah, I've been real pleased with Jordan. He's a kid that when I first got here, I was really pleased with his leadership ability. He's one of the guys in my room, A, that was coming back, that had played some. So I was really drawn to his leadership. He, he tried to lead the group. But I've also, we've tried to work on his weaknesses, you know, and that those weaknesses are we really want to get him to be a better cover guy. So we've spent a lot of time on that, you know, and, and he's still doing a great job with our snapping and, been very pleased with that, but you know he he's been a, a real uh, kind kind of like you know Breen and AJ. He's a guy that's been in some games. We have Jordan that's been in some games here. So you got two guys that's been there and done that, you know. And they're they're all battling for positions, and nobody's given anything. They got to earn it. But 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 been real real pleased with him.